Now then, what do we have here? One of my most memorable games from the NES library, in terms of pure atmosphere, is the 1989 port of Shadowgate. The castle-crawling, point-and-click adventure with hundreds of different ways to meet a gruesome end, and lots of trial-and-error puzzle-solving was not without its problems, being very tough and overly cryptic at times. But the story and ambiance of the adventure was certainly unique for the time. So when I discovered this game, and realised that I'd never tried it out despite owning it for years, imagine how excited I was that there might have been a similar experience on the Game Boy. I took a minute before really getting into the meat of the game to read up on the storyline, and I'm glad I did. You have come to the famous alchemist Hermetrix, I don't think he's a character in Asterix, but I could be wrong, and have been accepted as his apprentice. Hermetrix is, frankly, a bit of a bastard, however, and has sent you to the great fortress of Mysterium to prove yourself. This place is a terrifying labyrinth created and populated by the Aramas, a race of giant anthropomorphic ants. The task bequeathed to you is to discover the secrets of the nature of each metal and mineral, and the transforming powers of each alchemical process – fire, water, acid, and mercury. When you have mastered this, you may be able to succeed in the final test. Rescue the giant ant civilization and your predecessor, the previous apprentice Cadmia, who is still trapped. The maze is presented to you from a first-person perspective, and is largely represented by lines somewhere between the Vectrex and the dungeons from the first Fantasy Star game. Graphically, everything is functional, and although basic, still quite striking. You move around in the four cardinal directions, as you'd expect, in a dungeon-crawling manner, rather than the single-screen transitions that Shadowgate offered. When accosted by an enemy, you need to choose to go into Aim mode by pressing B. This ceases your movement, replacing it with a crosshair. You can still move forward, but to maneuver with any effect will take juggling between the two modes. You can carry 18 items around with you, which is quite a large inventory. Press SELECT to access it via the menu screen at any time. Press A to choose an item, after which there are a number of commands that you can choose from. You can examine an item, drop it, or use it in the immediate vicinity. There is also a status screen and a map that can be accessed from here. The main gimmick of the game is that of alchemy. You will find around each stage these pools of fire, water, acid, and mercury, into which you need to drop various objects that you find, such as metal ingots and dust, flowers, herbs, all manner of random things actually, in order to transmute them into various keys, weapons, and other things you need. This is the first real sort of flaw with the game, there's a great deal of trial and error here, and a ton of criticism as to what becomes what. The aim of each floor, of which there are ten, is to get to the trap door, which lets you further downwards. I've mentioned already the fluky element of wanging things in the pools and hoping that something useful comes out. The problem you'll come across so, so often is that it's more than likely that the thing that'll come out will be useless, meaning you've wasted your raw materials. If you haven't enough of something to make a key to get past the one door that's barring you, it looks like you're starting again. You get three lives, and if you die, you restart a floor. But other than that, there's no way to turn back the game. No save points, no passwords, nothing. This is such a huge oversight, which, coupled with the fact that a lot of the correct game choices are basically arbitrary, leaves the player nothing but disenfranchised that their travails have come to naught. Shadowgate was brutal with the deaths, but even in that game you are allowed to try lots of things out in lots of places. Is there any adventure game that punishes the player for making the wrong moves as much as this one? The only way to beat the game is to learn by rote, or writing any successful steps that you manage, and just rinse and repeat until the game's over. That's not overly appealing, is it? The combat sequences should have been handled as part of the adventure-style interface, rather than having a separate fighting method. This is clunky, difficult, and irritating, rather than providing any compelling break from the main game, and it seems forced. After many rounds around the dungeon, you'll soon realise that everything looks the same. There are no inns, no shops, no NPCs really, and all the scenery is basically identical. 
The music comprises of a handful of eerie but not particularly clean songs. They're pretty brash. I like the melodies, and they certainly fit crawling around a creepy dungeon, but they're not engineered or polished superbly well. But then, Asmic were not a huge development team by any stretch. Why there's no password save feature is baffling, and it means you'll be repeating yourself a lot if you ever want to beat this game. There's a lot to do in one go, lots of steps to get right, and as soon as you shut the power off, it's gone. Mysterium could have been great. The storyline is right out of a fantasy fiction novel. The game had the potential to be a classic, but it really failed to reach it. How utterly disappointing. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or alternately, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.